Welcome to East Coast DNA. We're back here in the apartment with a live in-person guest. So we have two, actually. We have Ashley George here, singer-songwriter out of Pecto here in uh, Pecto County, Nova Scotia. Talk about Pecto County a lot, but I probably focus on the Glasgow more so because it's where I am. Right. So uh, definitely a lot of talent coming out of Pecto. And then uh, we have Matt Harris here as well. So uh, Matt uh, has a, was it, what would you call it? Photography, videography, camera man, camera person? I think probably pics, vids, and design, everything. There you go. Yeah. So uh, they're both here today. Uh, they're collaborating on a new music video for Ashley's new song. So uh, welcome, guys. Thank you very much. Thanks for having us. So, Ashley, uh, you and I know each other fairly well, and uh, some of our listeners are Pecto County based, and we definitely know who you were, especially people that follow uh, the Jam Sessions podcast. You're on there, there a couple years ago, too. And right on. Pecto definitely knows Ashley George. A few people do, yeah. Yeah. I, I do remember in the old days, you were one of the first musicians that I noticed, no matter where you played, you brought your own audience with you. Yeah. Like you'd play on the other side of the county and everyone from Pecto would go there. Yeah, we had a good, pretty good following for a while. They were lucky. Yeah. We friends and yeah, it was awesome. So you're playing solo now with this new single. Yeah. But you back this past summer, you had actually revisited your uh, Beyond Ash days. Yeah, we did a, I, I don't know if it was two or three year reunion. And then before that, I think it was like a 10 year reunion and. And so is that that's kind of a one-off, but maybe revisit it again in the future type thing? Yeah, possibly. It's just a lot of work to get everybody together to practice for two hour, like for a two-hour set. You know? Yeah. It's like a, I mean, we get in the groove pretty quick, but I think it, we had one rehearsal in two years before our last show. And was it hard to go back to that? Like after? no, no, no. It was. It felt normal. Like it yeah. felt. I don't know. I I kind of missed like rocking out with the. Yeah, because that's, kid and, well, we were kind of just briefly talking about it before we start recording, like, there's not a lot of bands around right. that are just traditional rock bands. There's a few, mm -hmm. and a few of them have been on this podcast for sure. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, there's not a lot of those anymore. No. And also worth noting for your history, too, is the whole machete, black belt, and yeah. like the whole, the whole thing, because you had a band... And then you still have a company. Yeah. Yeah, I still do the company thing. But the band we did a we did one like a, a birthday party a couple months ago with Machete. It was it was fun. Oh, did like, you really? Yeah. Out in Lawrencetown actually. Awesome. And are Mike and Eli both like were they both in that? Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. just the three of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they are uh, they've been on here through the bomb sala. Right. And I mean they've been referenced a few times, I'm sure, because their songs oh, yeah. have been played around a little bit. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they were just at Mike Fest too. So oh, okay. it was a little bit of a revisit of the old days for the Pecto crews. Everybody was out performing this summer, which was nice to see. Yeah. And Kitchen Criminals is still an active band yeah. as well. So that's yeah, more we of your... some shows coming up in November. And, yeah. Yeah, and we were booking shows for next summer. And... Who's all in that now? Because uh, you had a little lineup change with Haley that. Haley McLeod, uh, Jason Delore. He'd be the newest okay. member. He's our new, our new bass player. I guess mm -hmm. probably two years ago now, but. And Sandra Coast. Okay. Yeah. And so that's, for anyone that doesn't know, uh, that's more of your Celtic kind of traditional yeah, like East Coast, Coast music. music yeah. But I believe we have some of that in our Live Shots playlist, too, oh, okay. maybe from the summer here. So Yeah, we had a little meeting a couple of weeks ago about doing another, uh, either a single and a video or, you know, just awesome. talk about doing something soon. So Definitely something to keep yeah, an eye on. we got lots of material to work with, so. And so on your own, in your own personal path as a musician, mm -hmm. I know you do a lot of stuff where it's acoustic solo. Yeah. But years ago, and I don't remember all the details, so I thought maybe I'd just ask you while we're recording. Mm -hmm. There was many, many years ago, right. I think. You went on a trip somewhere. Did you go down to like New York or something for a while at one point? Uh, I went to New York a few times. Yeah. Like as a solo artist, you mean? Was it as a solo or was it I with one of the bands? I did that and with Beyond Ash oh, okay. a couple times, yeah. And so did you have any traction when you were like south of the border? Um, Well, I played a few shows at some clubs in like Manhattan mm -hmm. and the talent there was like, 
not, mind blowing. Not like Pictou County or Cape yeah. Breton or Newfoundland. Like it was, it was like people were up there with their lyric sheets and like you know either they could play guitar or they could sing. They couldn't do both. Oh together. really? Like it was like that style oh, of shows. Yeah, so I was almost, okay. I was all kind of shocked. Yeah. Because I was kind of nervous being on these bills with mm-hmm. these people I didn't know, and then I get up there and I was like, wow. You could tell that they weren't playing the tavern every weekend for five years, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it was actually kind of mind-blowing that way. That is probably a common East Coast thing, too, because mm-hmm. a few musicians have said that, just the difference they see and how much yeah. effort people here have to put in to mm-hmm. keep it going. Yeah. That it really hones the craft a little bit versus if you have too many opportunities right away, yeah. you have to rush to keep your talent in power with how fast you've risen. Yeah. So the new stuff that you're working on is, mm. is it just yourself solo for the new single? Uh, yeah, it was just, uh, I kind of just wrote it myself and went out to Dave Gunning's studio and played some guitar on it. And then he played some drums on it and I played more guitar. He played some bass and he did some singing. I did some singing. So we kind of worked on it together. So timing wise, did that overlap at all? Did you run into Steve McIntyre when he was up there? Cause he was there a few months ago. Uh, I th- I think he might have been there around the same time, yeah, but yeah. not the same days, obviously. But okay, yeah, yeah. yeah I kind of remember that name. Yeah, yeah. Getting thrown around now. Yeah, he's sure. a good fellow. He's been on here a couple times as well. Okay. I'm sure we're gonna run into him in Yarmouth there next weekend too. Nice, doing the Yarmouth gig, are you? Yeah, we're heading down for uh, Nova Scotia Music Week, so right. another three or four days. I don't know if I have enough time to process all my stuff from Music New Brunswick before mm-hmm. I get down to Music Nova Scotia. Yeah, but. I remember staying there. Uh, I remember playing at uh, the music week or the weekend or whatever. And I I was playing guitar for Fleur mm-hmm. and I don't remember Forest Dweller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was playing bass. I was playing guitar, and, and Fleur was there. And I remember Carl Monroe was there. It was like kind of a cool, cool scene. Anyway, we ended up. I think we made maybe one hundred fifty dollars each, and it cost us like. 200 some bucks for gas <laughs> oh yeah so we like drove down and then we ended up like we lost like probably 30 40 bucks just because we had to eat like yeah but it was worth the experience like oh yeah they're great for networking but they there is there's not much of a balance for the no. cost versus profit that you're yeah. pretty much investing from almost a marketing point of view yeah. but it's a good hang too oh, like God, it's yeah. fun time so yeah and it's worth the trip plus they get to spend time with fleur and you know what i mean yeah so in that era, I'm curious too, because I know now from going to them the last couple of years, the few Pictou County people that I know that are actually going to those things. Mm-hmm. So who would have been going, like, would that have been the Pictou County crew back then or would there have been others from our I area? think Alert the Medic might have been there. Yeah, okay. And it was Fleur Main, Bill and the Bedlam Boys, that band. Yeah. And I'm not too sure who else would have been there from Pictou County, but I, I'm maybe Stephen Bowers. Maybe. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, this must have been like two, three years ago then. With yeah, all at least yeah, 12, yeah. three years ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. So what is the new song about? Then? Is it... It's just basically about, uh, well, working at the shipyard for the last 15 years and, you know, working in Halifax, working in Picto, working in Dartmouth, you know, that type of, just that grind and that lifestyle and. Now, there's not too many songs about shipyard working, and people are, oh, when are you going to write a song? Well, you wrote a song about the car works, where's this, you know? And I was like, oh, yeah, I'll start it, I'll start it, and then I just kind of put it off and put it off, and I, I kind of wanted it to be something really good, so I didn't want to, like, just throw something together, mm-hmm. and then eventually I just threw something together. But I'm happy with it. Yeah, so. well, you're happy. People do say, like, a lot of artists say it, I guess I don't necessarily say it, but that it's the ones that you spend too much time on that you're never going to be satisfied with. Yeah. Like you, you really you have to pick it apart and pick it apart. Yeah. Pick it, apart. it has to just have that vibe and you have to kind of go with it and be happy with it. Yeah. And those are the ones that, as we were saying, like if you're yeah. doing the type of gig that you'll do and you kind of grind it after mm-hmm. a while, yeah, you have the diamond of the song that you want it really. So. Yeah. I found the hardest part was I wanted to, like I had no problem writing the lyrics but I wanted the chorus to kind of stand out, like have like a big chorus, like the car works chorus. You know what I mean? People can mm-hmm. sing along and relate to. So that was the hardest part kind of put together. But and I mean, it wasn't that hard. You know what I mean? Did you get a lot of people involved? Like, did you actually have any type of singing along with it? or uh, When I play it live, you mean? Yeah, or when you when I recorded, recorded it? it, yeah. Uh, no, just myself and Dave were singing yeah. when we recorded it. But uh um, I, I think I've heard people singing along. I only played it a couple times out and about. Yeah. 
but I, a lot of positive feedback. And, and lot catchy enough that people are catching yeah. on to the lyrics quickly enough exactly. there, too. Like I sent it to a lot of people I work with already. Yeah. So. Awesome. Kind of get their approval, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's nice to get the feedback from the people around. You know how much you're going to get razzed when it's out there for the public, too, yeah, right? Like, yeah. get, get a feel for what they're going to pick on yeah, you about. True story, so I, they can say what they want. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. They know the ones that are there. They know what's up. And so the music video itself mm-hmm. to go along with the song. Yeah. You're having a release party for this. Yeah. Well, I'll let Matt maybe can. Yeah, talk sure. About that. It's he on the. Set it all up. It's on the 25th of November. Um, we're going to have it down in Picto at uh, Fat Tony's just because there's a it's a great stage and a great room you can put a lot of people into it and we wanted to do something at the cost but renovating the cost didn't allow us to kind of yeah, tap sure. into that so we thought about moving it around Picto County but we thought Picto would be a good spot just because you know a lot of people can go there from the town and you know we're shooting inside the shipyard at Picto tomorrow so we're going to have a like sort of a connection with that because you know a lot of people grew up in the shipyard like my father worked there Mm -hmm. you know you worked there all of our family and friends are still working there or did work there so yeah to have that connection in picto i think it's important to do that well now i have a follow-up question already so you're gonna have to take the microphone yeah go ahead yeah (laughs) so when you were filming the video and you're not quite done yet right when you went out to find locations, they're all Pecto County locations then? Are they all Pecto locations? or you... No, we went everywhere. We like yeah. we shot down in Halifax. Um, I looked at places in Port Hawkesbury because the shipyard down there. Yep. Um, and then what we wanted to do is we didn't want to feel the video be to be forced. So what we did is we reached out. We put a call out to everyone in the area and said, look, you know, if you're working in the shipyard or have worked or currently or know somebody please respond back. And then we started just, you know, cataloging all the names, locations, and then we just went back and forth with uh, direct messages, text, phone, and we built a list of how we're going to do it over the course of three weeks. That's cool. So we, we've been hammering it out for three weeks, made a plan to go to Halifax and film everybody that wanted to be part of it down there. It's a lot of work to track people down and get down there. Yeah. And everyone that we talked to, wanted to be a part of it a because they will they they felt a like a connection to the shipyard because of a family member or a connection to ashley and everyone that we talked to was like anything for ashley i'll do it for ash and so you know it, it shows the level of kind of respect and, and camaraderie that you have amongst work peers that you do at the shipyard and they have a highly you put you in a high regard it's great so to capture that moment we didn't want to force anything so we went to their homes we went to everybody's home or a location that they admired and filmed right on location. So, you know, when you get into lighting, sound, different atmospheres, it's it's a different shoot in every single time. So we decided to shoot it all black and white up to a certain point, and then it's going to turn into a color because the way the song transitions, we want to capture that transition through visual aid. So that's that's primarily where we started. But yeah, we're still doing it. Off to the shipyard tomorrow, the, the shoot in there. And then uh, uh, in uh, this weekend, we're also shooting your shot with the band, and uh, we got some coverage, some presses coming out to do some interviews with Ash on that too on that day. So it's gonna be a busy day. So lots of sandwiches to be packed in the bag there that day, right? Stay sober for that one. Oh my God! Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's pre- it's pretty good. We're good, excited. Awesome. And now, did you bring a guitar in with you? No, but I do have a guitar in my car. Did you want to actually play a song? It's up to you. Yeah, it don't matter to me. Let's take a quick little break, and then we'll come back, and I'll get you to play okay. a little tune for sure. a bit. Yep, I can do that. We got bills to pay, and we got kids to feed. We got bills to pay, and we got kids to feed. I'm laying down beats Some days I feel mentally unstable 
It's those sparks and the fun through the sleeves It's enough It should be our tongue Down in confined spaces Respirators on the faces Gouging and grinding on the daily I'm pressure washing halls And slips, trips and falls And everyone's smiling on payday Thank you for that, Ashley. You're welcome. And now, pulling on some of those themes and a couple things that we mentioned earlier, one thing I definitely wanted to ask Mm -hmm. with the whole song being about working class and some of your other songs would have been as well. Right. You do have a full-time job as well. You're not a full-time musician or anything like that. No. So, like, you are one of the people you're singing about. Yes. So, is there intentions then of this being a single that's going to lead to like an EP or an album or some touring uh, or possibly it... I got all kinds of stuff to record. It's just, just the timing and the money. And you know, it's just like, and you know, I, I'd like to record another album, but I'd like to maybe record it with Dave or, you know, a studio that I'm comfortable with. And yeah. Yeah. So uh, I guess it's just the time. Uh, I think the kitchen criminals want to do an album. I think I, I'd like to do an acoustic album. I plan on doing that for a long time. It's just so hard with I got three kids as well. So Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and that's that's I mean, as somebody that knows you too, I'm kinda mm-hmm. curious about some of those things too. Yeah. Because like I know that that balance is hard mm-hmm. and my personal life circumstances have shifted over the last couple of years. So yeah. I'm able to do stuff like this all the time, which is right. great. Mm-hmm. And there's reasons why it's not great too, of course. Yes. But it uh it just allows me the time in order yeah. to do whatever I want, right? So Yeah. Now that you have a little sliver of time to focus on this song, mm-hmm. and your video release is coming up here, right? November twenty fifth, you guys said it was. Yep. All right, so I did want to also ask another separate topic, mm-hmm. and this will be kind of segmented a little separately, so it's probably a chapter in the description as well. Sure. Um, a lot of our guests that we've had on have had different battles with sobriety. Mm-hmm. And I know that you have had some experience with that yourself. Oh, yeah. And I will admit myself, when I started this podcast, I like really was really hammering home. Like, we need venues where not everybody's drunk and mm-hmm. we need to have more all ages spaces. Mm-hmm. But now that we do have the all ages spaces, and I'm going to shows all the time. There is the option to go to more of a listening room so that you're mm-hmm. not in a rowdy crowd. And yeah. I mean, if anyone's getting on the sauce a little too hard, they're going to make enough of a ruckus that they're being tossed quietly. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, there's an option for 
everyone. And everything that I've ever really looked for on the show was to promote that everybody had their own kind of safe space to enjoy the art Mm because the focus is really to promote the music right and you don't want anything detracting from you don't want to be like well my favorite band's at this bar but i don't like that bar because yeah they think this or they don't welcome my kind regardless of whatever you identify Mm -hmm. but the drinking thing is something that i personally have had a little bit of conflict with because i have had alcoholism in my lifetime that Mm -hmm. It was resolved, and they're sober, mm-hmm. and that's great, and that was a role model for me growing up. Yeah. But I also know that there's a lot of people out there battle with it, and mm-hmm. I know of some people more recently that have fallen off the wagon going back to old habits. But mm-hmm. the reason I want to ask you about it is because since I do know you, yeah, I do know you had a problem. I mm-hmm. do know that you were sober for a while. Mm-hmm. But I know you now, and I you had mentioned about staying sober for the show. Yeah. So everyone stay sober for Ashley's show. Yeah. But we're not promising he's not going to have a beer afterwards. Oh, for sure, yeah. And I've done that with you myself yeah. over the last couple of years. So like, yeah. I know that it's not like you are have fallen off the wagon. No. You've somehow managed to find a stride where you have yeah. that side of you under control. Yeah. Now, personally, again, and I don't know if this is a universal thing for people, myself, the reason that I have a problem with those type of things, I know myself that if I found myself drinking too much, Mm -hmm. I might not be able to get myself out of that. Yeah. Because I have that type of addictive personality. Yeah. Like, obviously, anyone that watches the podcast, we went from two a month to like three a week this Mm -hmm. year. That's me. So that's my personality. Right. I'm curious for yourself Mm -hmm. if your own reflection on it and if maybe, hopefully, since I see you doing well, hopefully you have some tips for some of the people out there that are maybe trying to cut back and they they, they know they're not going to quit because they don't have the desire to fully quit, but they need to kind of manage it. Mm -hmm. Well, with me, it was like uh, when we were playing, like I always had to drive for Mm -hmm. one and I always had to sing, so I always had to remember three hours worth of lyrics and so i would you know we were playing like wednesday thursday friday saturday like every week every week for a few years so i would have maybe one or two beer every time we play just whatever sometimes i wouldn't have any and then and then sunday would come along it's like well i'm gonna have a few drinks tonight i'm gonna get a buzz on so then sunday monday tuesday would be my weekend Mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden that turned into well i'm gonna have three or four drinks every night and then and then it was like six drinks a night and then i was like oh i think i'm gonna i think i got a problem and i i should go to aa and all this you know what i mean that kind of stuff and then our manager uh brian buchanan passed away um from uh uh, cirrhosis of the liver Mm -hmm. and i was drinking with him a lot yeah and and then fleur passed away and and then my dad passed away before that and then I was like, I got to stop drinking. Like, so yeah. I, I stopped drinking and then I started doing jujitsu and started uh, that Black Pop Machete company. And then I went sober for four years. Mm-hmm. And then I was playing in New Jersey one night when I went down to New York and uh, someone offered me a drink when I was done. So I had like a, a sip of it. So I had, I started, I didn't start drinking again, but I could have a drink yeah. here and there. And then I just kind of kept with that, you know. But before, like, I would, I remember waking up and the first thing I could think of was like, okay, okay, so I drank that last night. That means I have this much in the fridge. I think someone left this out in the garage. Like, I was planning my, you know, and I'd work yeah. all day, come home. Like, it was just like, I needed that. Right. That's, that was a scary thing, you know, when you, when it's on your mind, when you wake up first thing in the morning, if you're, and then, and even if you're hungover, it's a normal day. So your normal mm-hmm. day, you're not hungover because it's normal, you know? Yeah. So yeah. that, and then I just kind of cold turkey did. And then the pre kids, there was a point that I had without leaving the county mm-hmm. I had a bar that I went to on a certain night for yeah. six of the seven nights of a week yeah and I was almost kind of proud of it like I didn't yeah. I thought that that's what people do or something I, I don't yeah. know what type of headspace I you was in you kind of grow up and like in high school like in junior high like the older kids were always drinking on the weekend like it was like wow I can't wait so I you know like you, yeah you look forward to being partying like yeah exactly 
No, I, I do see, like, and I've said it a lot on the show, too. Like, if you go out now, like, to the city, say, and yeah. you go out for... And not, not any specific city. I've been to a few the last couple of years seeing shows now, too. It's like, yeah. there's places that have multiple, like, non-alcoholic options now. Yeah, and there's lots, lots of yeah. different things. Like, our culture's shifted a lot yeah. over the last few years. Yeah, like, you we don't have see a lot too more. many people staggering around these days. Like no. they used to be. I think no. the cannabis helped. Yeah, 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 that, yeah. I mean, that I, I laugh. Like, you know. Yeah, yeah, I laugh. But yeah, having cannabis readily available legally, maybe, mm-hmm. maybe it did shift it a little yeah. bit. Like, I know that can stop you from getting messed up. You yeah, know? yeah. So I don't know, but it's good that you're doing well, and yeah. I just I wanted to acknowledge that at least mm-hmm. anyway. That, you just gotta like, be able to control it. And yeah, yeah. I suggest if anyone had that problem, just to find something that you can occupy occupy yourself with, like a you know, martial arts or skateboarding or some whatever art whatever you're into interviewing right? musicians exactly. and doing graphic yeah. design <laughs> yeah keep busy you know yeah yeah exactly mm-hmm. yeah lots of things so speaking of keeping busy i know that you do have a drive ahead of you yeah ahead and the, old, the dark side you have what two active bands right now being your solo and kitchen yep. criminals and then potential revisiting of some of those projects but before yeah. we let you go i did want to ask you about your business maybe we should promote that a little bit too and sure. it does tie in with the music because machete was your band yeah and then you had black belt machete as your company yeah so so i just basically when my, when my dad passed away i started trying to do everything i wanted to do soon yeah sooner than later so uh, when we were kids, we skateboarded all the time, and there was never really any local skateboard companies, or nobody was sponsoring kids in, in around. And it's like, well, I'm gonna do that, you know. So I came up with a couple logos and uh, uh, made some clothes, and started making decks. And then I found like an artist that I would use every couple months to put out new designs, and I, w- I would try to think to myself, what can I put on a skateboard that I haven't seen before? Well, okay, well I haven't seen the solar system, so I put the solar system on a on a skateboard. And I haven't seen the ship Hector. I put that and. I haven't seen the little rascals, so I put them on a skateboard, like stuff like ideas like that, the like Count Chocolate, the whole serial killers thing. I put yeah. that, like just whatever you can think of, you know. And so yeah, I just kind of went with it, and I had lots of support, and I I started like I sponsor you know a couple guys from Halifax, a couple guys from Truro, you know, a couple, just from all over Nova Scotia. Yeah. And they, they promote the company and they ride the boards and they get clips and you know just share them around and and relate it, but not part of the business directly. Mm-hmm. You were the person i'm sure there was many many like there was hundreds of people helping you but yeah you really were the person that spearheaded the Becto skate park that was yeah that as well. the, yeah when my when my dad passed away we had to, we wanted to do something for him like a an event mm-hmm. for music. maybe even i think it was just supposed to be the one time and i was like oh we'll call it the jam for jimmy and then so we took in like two thousand dollars like oh what are we gonna do with it and i was like well why don't we try to fundraise a skate park and we'll put that in his name you know? yeah so then we started doing that like once a year, once a year, once a year, and then 12 years later, 13, and here we are. Yeah, and it looks awesome. Yeah, it is. It's really awesome. And yeah. and kudos to having bands perform at your oh, grand yeah. opening. That was that was yeah. cool. But we did have a lot of help. Like the government helped us out a lot. But yeah. It was a long, long haul. Like a lot of people joined the committee and left the committee and joined the You know what I mean? That type sure. of stuff. And it's a lot of work. Like we, before it was just me doing one thing a year, and then it turned into like two things a year, and then... The more it went on, I was like, holy, like, we got to do two things a month, you know? And then mm-hmm. finally we got a group of, like, ten uh, guys, girls, whatever, and we started doing a lot, like, two or three things a month, and that's when the ball got rolling. And the more money we, we made, the more money people donated, like, mm-hmm. it was like that. So, yeah, it was a, it was a, quite the experience. I don't know if I could handle doing it again, but. Oh, yeah. Well, it's great to see it done, because I remember, like, yeah. it was getting close to the end. The, the, every time you'd see a post, it's like, this yeah. is the announcement that they met their goal. Like, you were really close, and it yeah. was a short period of time, but it felt mm-hmm. like forever, mm-hmm. because you were so But then close. when COVID came, everything, the prices went up on everything. Yeah. Like, our goal, I think it was, I don't know, it was even 200000 skate park, uh price of it was like 200,000 and then by the end of it was like 333,000. Yeah, it's insane. Bad times yeah. for that too, but Yeah. It's there now anyway, so yeah. any plans to have another show there with bands again? Uh or? we're doing a well, we're doing like a Halloween show this Okay. uh Sunday. Well, not a show, an event this yeah. Sunday, so but no bands this time, but 
Well, we'll keep an eye on that in the but future. But we are definitely going to do bands again for sure. And on a personal note that isn't really a podcast question, but I'm going to tie it back into it. Okay. Your mother's basement, you had the little like half pipe thing yeah. built up there. Is that still down there? That's still there, yeah. Yeah, I built uh, that for the kids on Chris, for Christmas. Yeah. So if by some chance Katie Lamont from like a motorcycle is watching this, this is the guy. I, I, I was I drinking at your mom's and I took a picture down in the basement. Oh, I sent okay. it to Katie. So. Oh, I'm sure she's can't wait to watch this. She she wants to come down and skate on the ramp. Oh, I know that. So. Yeah, Tell them per- to come down and play. Per- perfect size for her too. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, thank you, Ashley. We will let you get back on the road, and uh, hopefully everybody comes out on November 25th. If by some chance... we'll be keeping track. Who's there, who's not there. Well, yeah, yeah. Big shit list for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. So if somebody doesn't make it, uh, besides the fact that they should watch their back if they're anywhere in your proximity... That's right. Will it be, like, released on YouTube and that type of thing afterwards? Yeah, I'm not sure when we're going to do the YouTube release, like, right away, or we're going to wait a day or two, or... Well, we're going to stream it live. On Facebook Live. No, okay. During the event. Mm-hmm. And then we have... And then they have to stay tuned. Yeah. Well, yeah. And we also have a, a B-roll of behind the scenes of the whole production. Oh, cool. So we're going to re-release that afterwards as, as well. So. Awesome. Not edited or anything. Yeah. No, you know See, what? We really are. I would mock that, but anyone that actually watches all my videos, if you go back, you could see somewhere. It's like, this is just R.C. Walker around the camera. And yeah, it was. It's, it's and it was my phone. It's going to on... Um, the 23rd of November on iTunes and Spotify. Oh, okay. All that is going to get released on that. Before the video. On the 23rd. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So everybody can uh, go out there and hear the song. And then then when everybody's there watching, they can sing along while they're watching the yeah. video with you. I'll be watching who's singing to it. Perfect. Cool screen in with the, the whole <laughs> You've all been warned. I yeah. don't think he's kidding. No, I'm not. <laughs> All right, thanks, Ashley. Thank you. And uh, we'll have us. to do this again. I, I've been doing this for a couple of years, and yeah. I've, I've known you yeah, about I'm ten times as long. Do this already? Yeah, I know. I, I'm a little bit more mobile now, so I'm going to surprise you and show up with it in Pecto someday. We when should you do don't one know. on the on the mini ramp. Yeah, that's what we'll do. We'll do one on the. That's Actually, good idea. I'll see Katie next weekend. Okay. I'm going to ask her if she's willing to. She was going to come here for an interview anyway. Yeah. So yeah. I'm, I'm going to yeah. ask her if she wants to come down, and we'll go up and record from yeah. that. That'd Sounds be awesome. Good. All right, thanks again. Thank See you, you guys. Thanks, Matt.